So you've finally bested Hans the Butcher in Camp Happy Trails, and you're ready to move on to Carnival of Horrors. But you find that your minis aren't painted. Well, you're in luck, because today we're going to be covering a really quick and easy method to paint all of these minis, so you can keep burning your way through those features in the hit solo game Final Girl from Van Ryder Games. Final Girl is a solo strategy game from Van Ryder Games in which you are going to be playing of a protagonist in a horror movie film, fighting off the villain and also saving other people along the way. Van Ryder has produced a ton of these awesome high quality minis that I will be teaching you today how to paint your way through in order to get them to the table as quickly as possible with little time and money invested. The way we're going to do that today is with a technique I like to refer to as the sun drop method. You may have seen this on a lot of Kickstarters, especially ones who have a lot of minis in it. They like to use this method to add some dimension, some depth, and some cinematic feel to these minis in order to make them look a little bit more exciting than they normally would. We're going to put a little twist on that sun drop method by highlighting the weapons that these characters carry. It is a horror movie after all, and they are going to be using these deadly implements in order to best one another. So I think it's really cool and really important that we highlight those things to give it just a little bit extra flair. And as you can see, Final Girl has already established the color palette for us. We're going to be doing a little bit of red, and we're going to be adding a sepia tone to all of these minis. We're going to knock them out in no time. The sun drop method itself features a gradual addition of lighting values that we will then add a filter over top of by way of using what's called a wash. Now the wash can be any color that you want, but as I mentioned before, we're going to be using a sepia tone today to kind of keep it neutral. We want to keep it classic. We want it to feel almost film noir. The next time you're ordering that Kickstarter that has over 100 minis in it, you'll already know how to paint all of them before anyone else gives you a hard time about not having any painted minis in your board game. Oof. <laughs> Call me out like not that I've ever experienced that before. <laughs> Jamie, you're a mini painter. Why don't why aren't your minis painted? Well, guys, I'm painting everybody else's minis. <laughs> this this entire part. box. <laughs> this can also be a really effective technique to just add your own flair to a game that has such a distinct characteristic to it already. If there's a game you have that is already cinematically appealing or inspiring to you, this really simple method can help draw out some of those details without spending a ton of time on each of them. Ideally, without dry time in mind, we're only going to be spending like 10 to 15 minutes on each of these minis. The following is a list of materials that you're going to need to paint along with today's video. Please feel free to pause this if you miss anything. <laughs> Using this, what I call the sun drop method, will get you through your minis quickly, easily, and without a lot of commitment. It also requires fewer paints, and it's a much, much easier and a little bit more low-key process. If you follow my methods exactly, we'll end up with the minis having a film noir vibe and giving it a little bit of character, but nothing too detailed for each and every sculpt. Our objective here is to cover the mini in a light sepia tone to give it a really moody look but each of the weapons is going to have a red glow to it. What this will result in is a really, really dramatic looking mini without a lot of effort. So the first thing we're gonna do, just like we did with Asami, is prime all of the minis from the collection. The reason I recommend brush on primer is, well, for a multitude of reasons. One is it gets you sitting down, it gets a brush in your hand and a brush on a mini. Sometimes that can catapult you into a painting session that you were not anticipating. And it's a great way to build some momentum on days when you're just not feeling like painting. I use Steinal Res Black or I'll use Liquitex Black Gesso to prime the models. As a disclaimer I mentioned in our last video, if you're going to use the gesso, give it a little bit of time to cure before you start painting on it, or you may reactivate the paint. And don't forget to thin the gesso. This is used to prime canvases in fine art settings, so it will come out a little bit thick. Once all the minis are primed, you are going to grab your favorite gray color and a dry brush. I've chosen to use Ethereal Gray from Cuttlefish Colors. This is a medium gray with a bit of a cool tone to it, so it's a pretty big shift in light value, but it's not a whole lot of commitment to any particular color. Once you dry brush the gray and the white onto the model, you're going to pick your next color that you want them all to be. Now this is going to be put on in a very, very thin application, so it's not going to be that color as much as it's going to tint the white and gray towards that color. I've chosen a sepia tone. It's a warm brown that I really hope will help kind of show off the cinematic vibe of the red weapons that we'll be painting later. If you want your minis to be purple toned, you can use purple. If you want them to have an orange tone, you can use orange. The color you choose is not necessarily as important as the method we apply here. 
One thing you may want to consider, since each of these characters has a game that they're associated with, you may want to paint each of them in a different filter color. So again, as long as you follow these methods, as long as you follow these steps, you can use this same technique with any color of your choosing. So the first thing we're gonna do is, just like we did on our Asami model in the first video, we are going to be creating a wash. In order to achieve this wash, we're going to be mixing three parts water to one part paint. What you'll end up with is a really, really thin version of the color that you've chosen. We're gonna be putting this wash all over the models. You do have to be aware that if you apply too much, it will pool in areas. So the goal is to coat the mini in wash, not flood it in wash. If you're finding that you have applied too much and it's pooling, say, at the feet or in lower areas of the model, you can always rinse your brush and go back in with a slightly dampened brush, tap on the liquid, and it will wick it away. By applying this wash to the mini, we're going to be tinting all of those lighting layers that we added earlier. And now you can see why this is such a quick method, because once you've established those lighting values, you put this wash over top of it, you're pretty much there. You're almost done. Now once the wash is dry, and it may take a little while, I do encourage you to wait and see how it looks once it's done. It's helpful to know what the wash looks like when it's dry before you decide what the next step is. So you may decide it needs another layer. Go for it, add another layer. It's always easier to add paint than it is to take it away. Just like adding salt to water or your favorite dish, it's easier to add a little bit more salt to taste than it is to remove it. And don't be afraid to experiment. If you do mix up different washes, you can always try one layer of one wash and then add another to get just the right consistency. Once you're satisfied with the tone that you've established with those washes, we're gonna move on to painting the weapons. I've chosen red to give it a horror movie feel. We're going for a cinematic vibe that matches the intense and palpable feeling you get from playing Final Girl. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to focus on what I guess I can refer to as the business end of all the weapons. That's stupid. I don't know why I said that. That's a dumb way to put the that. The business end. No, that's what I would say. I just wasn't expecting it. So we're gonna focus on the business end of all the weapons. We're not gonna be painting the hilts, the handles, or anything like that. We're always gonna be focusing on the blades or the deadly parts of them. So the first thing... <laughs> that was so eloquently put. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes I have to say the stupid thing and just get it out of me before I actually say the smart thing. The business end. Yeah, the business end, oh you know? That's a... So I'll be taking Sacrificial Red from Cuttlefish Colors, and I'll be painting it onto the pitchfork in Dr. Fright's left hand. Once we've layered on enough of that red to reach the consistency of color that we hope for, we're gonna go back in with a little bit of white. Once that brighter lighting value is established, we're gonna go over it again with a little bit of that original red color. It's going to create a visual glow effect that will add depth and dimension to the weapons. For bonus points, you can always go back to your old friend, the dry brush, dip it in a little bit of that sacrificial red, and dry brush it in areas around the weapon to give it even more of a strong glow effect. And once everything's dry, you're done. That's it. The sun drop method. Super simple, super easy, applicable to just about anything. A lot of times you'll find that the sun drop method is used in Kickstarters or games that feature a lot of minis because it's a really, really great way to paint your way through a lot of stuff very quickly. And again, you can alter this to fit your needs. If you want them to be purple, you can just thin the purple the way that we did with the brown. If you wanna make them yellow, you can do the same thing. The only limit is the imagination that you put into it. I hope that learning this sun drop method makes you feel a little bit more capable to tackle any huge projects you might have laying around that you've just wanted to paint but haven't had the time to do. This is easily something that you could prep on the weekends and then come home and paint while you're relaxing on a weeknight after work. It's a low commitment, low effort, easy to do, very relaxing method to paint these minis and you can knock out a bunch of them and people will be really impressed i promise people get really impressed with painted minis i'm, I'm the most impressed no i'm just kidding <laughs> whether you enjoyed the detail painting or the sun drop painting more i hope you feel a little bit more empowered and capable to paint through these minis because it's such a joy to do so and see the painted minis while you're playing your game i genuinely feel a game with as much style and panache as final girl deserves painted minis this cinematic game is something that can only be enhanced by painted minis. So don't be afraid, you can do it. Thank you guys so much for joining me today on the process. My name is Jamie Daggers and this isn't the only place you can find me. I actually run a Tuesday through Friday stream over on twitch.tv slash Jamie Daggers. 
where I will be painting from 1 to 5 p.m. almost every day. One of my favorite things that we do over on my Twitch channel is every Friday we do a four color challenge where I have chat pick four colors and I paint a mini start to finish using only those four colors. The one you're seeing right now is one that we did most recently and believe it or not that is four colors only. Otherwise you can see me do all other sorts of weird stuff like drawing Pokemon from memory and sharing all sorts of fun stories and anecdotes with the uh, community at large. I'm also always teaching people over on the stream so if you have any questions as you go through this process don't be afraid to come over and ask them to me while I'm live. I love teaching people mini painting and stream is no different. I also have a handful of other YouTube videos that you'll find here on my YouTube account and shorts that go through technical skills that you might want to brush up on. <laughs> brush. Nah. I'm posting almost daily over on Instagram of all the finished models and projects that I'm working on. And I also post funny TikToks, reels, and YouTube shorts. I would love to have you guys follow along and enjoy this beautiful hobby with me. I would love for you to join our Discord community where we're always sharing all sorts of art and doing things like community movie nights, game nights, things like that. Just sharing the joy of this hobby and being people who love it all in one space. If asking questions on stream isn't your thing or asking questions in a Discord, I do have a Patreon where I'm teaching group classes, one-on-ones, and even drop-in office hours where you can bring anything to the table and I will gladly walk you through whatever it is you need to learn. Those are all available through my Patreon. We host them through Discord, and I would love to have you be a part of that. And while we're on the topic, I wanna to thank all of my patrons that you see here on the screen right now. As a full-time artist, my income comes mostly from streams and patrons like these wonderful people here who have been supporting me over the past few months as I explore this new career being a full-time mini painter. Thank you so much again for joining me. My name is Jamie Daggers, and don't forget, if you can't trust yourself, trust the process.